How did you lose that one? Oh, definitely when I took a track orb instead of waiting for a spellbinder. I mean, that's like a gimme. I don't know if that was a bad faith question. I can make an assumption, of course. Sure. Let's let's oh cooldown so expensive, man. Let's get a little extra damage. I still don't think I've had a win with Antonio, man. We gotta try. Mortaccio? I don't know. I just there's something about Antonio. His friends would say, stop whining. Let's give it a shot. What, what evolves with Ebony Wing? Anything? Nothing. All right, well, in that case, I'm taking the damn knife. I'm also, I'm, I'm trying to avoid just like, always taking the same stuff, like 100% of the time. Because it seems like one of those situations where, like, if you just play it for, like, maximum solution, you will burn yourself out on the game in no time. Which I still maintain happens. Let's not take the cross yet. Happens to, uh... What was that game called? Where you cast spells. It's not Magicka. It's a roguelite where you cast spells. Not a wizard's lizard. Not Wizard of Legend. I actually think Wizard of Legend is like is a uh, underrated. Let's not call it goaded. But though that word still means something to me. I still think Wizard of Legend was underrated. The discourse just became once I found the solution, I won every run. Then you're like, okay. Take different spells then. Take take different spells 2022 challenge and just enjoy the game. But you're not ready for that one yet. Hollow Heart Upgrades Whip. That we will take. Bring it back? Oh, heavens no. Oh, yo! That's very nice. Sure. Okay. Well, she's pretty young. Hi, happy birthday. I love you and you are so so nice. I wish I could see you on your birthday. I love you and you are so so nice. I wish I could see you on your birthday. Even I wish I could give you the gift in per in pursue. I hope you have a wonderful birthday. I hope you have a wonderful birthday. Enjoy handmade words and cards. <laughs> handmade words. <laughs> that's, that's very cute, though. That's, cute. That's, that's a cute message. That's very nice of them. Dude, all my, my XP swarms are getting away from me. Clover upgrades cross. Wand gets upgraded by Tome. You know what? We haven't had the Wand in a uh, the Wand? We haven't had the Wand in a while. Why not Bible? Because we take Bible every time. It's like the bison of vampire survivors. We gotta like reinvent the meta. I don't know how much room there is for meta elasticity in this, because at the end of the day you're kind of just like walking around. Magic wand. Like, we gotta try to mix it up a little bit. The actual bison is Axe. That's great news, because I think Axe is good, but I very rarely take it. Santa water so bad. I know somebody that's getting a lump of coal in their stocking, about mm, 355 days from now. No, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> 345 days from now? It's not a leap year. Because leap year, uh, we had our last leap year in 2020. Oh, finally! 
So our first three piece today. Just an upgrade all across the board. That's like a level two penguin right there. Oh. I don't want an early pentagram. Crown doesn't evolve anything, right? I feel like the crown is nice to get experience, but then if you make it to 25 minutes, what do you, you're just farming coins for no reason? So I'm taking Rune Tracer, but only because I, I want Pentagram, but I don't want to take it till the very end. More whip. Dude, I don't know when the, the new Super Auto Pets content's gonna come out. I mean, I can't believe I started playing that game in September, and I'm still like, I wouldn't say all in, but I'd say I definitely like called a re-raise here at the end of January. But I'm, I'm itching for a meta shakeup. I'm itching for it. The beta is out for auto pets. It's not the new animals though, right? It's just like, it's the nerfs and the buffs. Bracer upgrades knife, I can live with that. Plus iOS. That's true, iOS still needs to come out. I mean, that's gonna, that's gonna blow the doors wide open. You thought, uh, Christmas noobs in Call of Duty was free food? How about when 1.3 billion iOS users get access to Super Auto Pets? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. There's not even any, like, monsters inside of the circle here. It's just me chilling with a bunch of flowers. Who do you think I am, David Byrne? Can't wait for those triple duck teams. Oh, Malf has an iOS device? I know what I said. I know what I said. Dude, you know what they should... I, I've got a great idea. Who makes Uno? Is it Hasbro or Mattel? It doesn't change anything. I just want to know where to direct the email. They should make Uno, but it should be truth or dare themed. So you could... You know, the, there's still cards with just numbers on them, but then all the, like, draw twos are either truths or dare cards and then you could reverse someone's dare if you played a dare on them and they're like oh kiss susan you could play another one and be like no you have to kiss susan four times and then they'd be like susan's my sister and i'd be like i i didn't make the rules that it seems like you should have been a little bit more careful with your dares then i think it I think it could go, man. I think this could be like a billion dollar idea. Pretty sure they have that. Well, we should just make it and market it better. There's probably all sorts of like billion dollar ideas out there like languishing in like local hardware stores. Let's just roll it up and, and sell it better. that easy I'm gonna die here no I'm not you're gonna die I mean hopefully not <laughs> but if it's between the two of us I'm gonna fight for my own survival swarm me swarm me I also want to get an attractor there's a lot of stuff on my wish list right now you guys ever get the Sears wish book as a kid before Christmas It was like a, it was a Sears catalog 
but specifically with their Christmas sales and merchandise. Oh, man. When you got your wish book, that was like when the holiday season actually started. We're not that old. I mean, where did you Christmas shop? Walmart.com? Wow, it seems like you're going to have a lot of nostalgia for that in 20 years. Walmart.com. I miss Zellers. To this day, I still maintain the best bacon cheeseburger I ever had in my life was in the Zellers in-store restaurant. I'll never be able to test that theory because they went out of business. And also, I'm, I was eating them like once a month from ages like four to like nine. So my palate was not at its best. Also, it's a great slogan too, right? Zellers, where the lowest price is the law. Oh man. the water. I don't even know what Zellers is. It was a Canadian department store, very similar to Sears, but a little bit more. It was like a Target, and it made it even more fitting because they went out of business. I think they went into liquidation, and then they got bought by Target, and then they changed all the Zellers to Targets in Canada, and then they went fully out of business like less than two years later. It's like one of the most shocking retail failures that's happened in my entire life in Canada for sure without a doubt which I don't really get because like I, I honestly would I would listen or watch like a 10 part episode uh, or 10, 10 part series on Netflix about how Target failed in Canada because when I'm in the US if I ever get the opportunity to go to Target I'm not like yo oh pog but I'm like yeah sure like I could pick up some stuff why not Apparently it was a case study on terrible logistics. I didn't know. I didn't know. I preferred Sears. Look, I my my parents were like huge Sears diehards. Like they would go to Sears in our hometown literally like every weekend. And he, as a child, it's like the most boring store on earth to be in. Like just watching your dad pick through like Pierre Cardin dress shirts to try to find one that's on sale. Then as I got older, I was like, I can appreciate I'm going to die. No, I'm going to make it through. I made it. <laughs> anyway. I can start to appreciate the store, and then it re it felt like once Sears was like, we might die, they just gave up, man. Like, they were gone. I remember, I, I know I told this story before, but when I got my Unity certification in the US, Kate was like, oh, I forgot to get, like, a, to bring a scarf. And I was like, that's fine, we'll just swing, there's like a Sears in this mall, we'll just stop by the Sears, get you, like, you know, a cheap scarf so you're not freezing. And, uh... We, there were two people in the checkout line, like two groups, us and the group in front of us, and one cashier, and we were literally like waiting 20 minutes for the cashier to process the order that was in front of us, which was, it, I mean, it's a long time ago now, but didn't even seem complicated. We were just, okay, I need, I need the evolved form. I'm gonna just pass away. We can do it. It's just you gotta do a loop. I'm dead. I'm not dead. Believe. Hmm. It, that's true. I, I mean, I don't know if you're a Sears employee and you're giving me this information, but um, it did seem like to check out, you had to... I'm, I'm just running it back, man. It seemed like you had to run through like a gauntlet of saying no to things that were designed to uh, milk just a little bit more money out of you. I'm trying again. I feel, now I, I can't say that this is certain, okay? Cause it doesn't sound right. 
I'll admit. But I feel like at the Sears where we bought like a $7 scarf, they asked us if we wanted to donate to the US military. And we said no, but what I was thinking was like, I think they're like good for it, you know? Like don't, isn't that essentially what like, you know, 38% of your taxes are for or something? Like, what do you mean? Do I want to donate? I'm buying a scarf. Do I want to donate to the US military? It might have been like a fund for veterans or something. I was like, man, I just got to get out of here with the scarf. It's like, it's a half hour ordeal. Anyway, so Sears, I feel like there was a time where it was good and I was alive for part of it. Not, not most of it, because I feel like you could buy a house in the Sears catalog in like the 50s, but uh, definitely like you know that a department store is like on its last legs when they have like 17 counters set up where you can actually uh, like pay for things and none of them are staffed at all. You have to walk through like the whole department store. You're, you're like checking out in the electronics section with a T-Fowl non-stick pan. That's not a good sign. Yeah, I think they're out of business. I hate to say this, like they should be. <laughs> if they're not. Hold on, hold on. What does, uh, what does the axe evolve with? Candle, right? Okay, well, we can take candle next time. Yo, it's this combination seems to be running it, man. <laughs> My dad was a craftsman fanatic, so we went to Sears Weekly. Yeah, didn't like I've always heard that that's like. And again, like this is internet, like like Reddit wisdom, so you gotta take it with a grain of salt. I always heard that like one of the signs that Sears was dying was like they used to sell craftsmen that had like a lifetime warranty. So you would buy like, you know, uh, a lug wrench and if it ever broke, you would just phone them and be like, my lug wrench broke and they would just send you another one like no questions asked. And then they like started changing the guarantee so it became like uh, like one year. And you're like, you know, I guess I don't know that much about tools, but I feel like it's a piece of iron. It's kind of suspect that, you know, the, the warranty became so bad. It's like, a, I guess they just submitted to like planned obsolescence at some point. Rosary down. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Costco had a similar thing, but they had to stop because people would return their TVs after three months. All right. You, look, you shouldn't f defraud Costco. I know how this is not going to be considered based, okay? But like, if there is a good big box store, is Costco. You should just, you know, shop there if you want to shop there. Eat the dollar fifty-five hot dog or whatever it costs. Don't, because you're, you, it's gonna be a Joni Mitchell thing. You're gonna be like, I didn't know what I had till it was gone. You used to be able to return their Christmas trees after Christmas. I mean, they had to know, right? They were like, we're just gonna take the L on this one for like customer service. When I was pretending to be busy on my phone while picking my daughter up from daycare the other day, they were talking about, uh, the other parents were talking about how like, they wanna get winter tires. And then one of them was like, oh, you should go to the Costco tire center for like a full set of winter tires and getting them installed. It was like 500 bucks or something like that. And I was like, 500 bucks? I just got winter tires put on in like the first week of December. Shit was not $500, let me tell you that much. It was like more. <laughs> By not an order of magnitude more, but 
certainly, you know, on the order of, I don't know, like 1.7 to 2.25 times more expensive. And I got the cheapest winter tires that they had available. These are not like, you know, Pirellis. They're like... I, I don't remember what they're named, but it, it kind of looks like Flock Lipa Grand Prix. Spinach Fire Wand, Bible. This build is unique enough. I feel we could take the Bible. Why would you cheap out on winter tires? Well, if I cheaped out, I would have bought used winter tires. I mean, they're still, like, very expensive. It's like, why cheap out buying a Lamborghini, you know? Like, it's still pricey. But the reason I cheaped out is because this shit was expensive. And it snows here, like, you know, like... <laughs> Not that much except for this year. This was actually, like, a really good year to, to have snow tires on. Yeah, that's it, Hakapalita! They're actually great value. Let's go. I am. I told you, I'm a great consumer. Accidentally buying uh, some of the best bang for your buck winter tires. You love to see it. There's an orb. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Who up pondering their orb? It's me. There it is. Okay. Clover is... I know this. Clover is knife, so we say no. We're at five minutes. Give me a duplicator now. Clover is cross. Clover is cross. Okay. We didn't take cross deliberately. We take duplicator here, but we want to get whip or axe to level... Or wand to level 10 before 10 minutes. That's, that's my new methodology. That's... That's Beck's new pollution. Look, you can... Here's the thing. You could just say every store sucks, okay? I respect your right to have that opinion. I'll just politely let you know uh, that Hassan's stream is... that way. I'm pointing at the sidebar and then up, because it's going to be, like, way up there if he's on your following list. Hassan's stream is, like, probably, like, right up there. A little bit more to the left. That's as far as I can go with a mirrored camera. But like, I, I think a more nuanced take is some stores are worse than others. And Costco's gotta be like one of the best. Cheap food court. Seem to treat their employees okay? Maybe? Also just a fun store to shop in. Even if only to go, whoa, look at the, wow, 80 rolls of toilet paper. I could never use that. I also, and I mean, you know, I don't know. Ikea's like half canceled or something. I'm just buying furniture, man. Okay, so like just cut me some slack here. We want Spellbinder for Bible. Yes. Um, but Ikea... Also, a fun store to shop in. And the food court do be pretty good. I don't, I've never had a hot dog at, at Ikea. I've never had the soft serve ice cream. But I have had my fair share of Kot Bular. And, I mean, it's pretty good. Plus, they have something. I don't know if maybe they changed it. The price of it recently. But um, there's something like a $2.50 breakfast or something like that. That's pretty amazing in the modern era. This, you got to remember that's Canadian dollars as well. Take an axe, sure. The only thing I I don't I th I read this wrong. I thought I thought you wrote the only thing I like about IKEA is driving out to Richmond, and I was like. Yes, FBI, this man right... I mean, sorry, yes, uh, CSIS, this man right here. RCMP, this man right here. Um, then I realized you said the only thing I don't like about it is driving out to Richmond. Yeah, it's like a... The IKEA parking lot in Richmond is actually a war zone. It's... As is uh, Richmond Town Center. I know, I, again, it's one of the many stories I've told many times. 
the first time I drove to Richmond Town Center, I saw two accidents happen between the time that I entered the parking lot to the time that I got my car parked. I've never seen anything like it in my life before. I mean, they were just fender benders because it's a parking lot, but I was like, even in a city, you might see like a collision every couple of years, maybe. I'm not outside that much, I guess, but to see two in one parking lot in less than five minutes was really like, it, it activated my Ralph Wiggum sense. I was like, I'm actually in danger. Vancouver dash cam always goes off in Richmond. It's true. I mean, I there's bad drivers everywhere, and there's bad drivers everywhere in Vancouver. I do feel like maybe it's biased and maybe it's anecdotal, but I do feel like I see some some of the most glaring disrespect for traffic laws in Richmond. Like. If you were like somebody in a Lamborghini crashed into and killed a pedestrian on Alberni Street, I would be like, that sounds like a very downtown Vancouver story, mostly because you said Alberni Street. But if you were like, hey, in Richmond the other day, I saw someone from the right turn lane turn left across four lanes of traffic on a red light, I would be like, yep, that sounds, that sounds about right. You gotta keep your head on a swivel. Okay, this is where things get rough. This mantis must die for us to proceed. Montreal's worst, Canada's worst driver once did an exam in Montreal and all the drivers they tested failed. I love Canada's worst driver. We might be able to get CBC to, to let us react to Canada's worst driver. I don't know. I technically own the show because I am a Canadian taxpayer. But I'll also say that Canada's worst driver is like, uh, is very funny to me that they take like, you know, literally the worst drivers they can find. And then they're like, okay, for your first lesson, we're going to have you back through like a maze in reverse. That's exactly as wide as your car. And then at the end of it, we're going to give you like 0.1 seconds to react to what direction uh, a pedestrian silhouette pops out of and swerve into the other direction. And I'm like, these people can't drive straight. This is just, this is exploitation. This is like torture. Like they can't even drive. And then they're like, you know, it'd be funny, hit this ramp. Parallel park in something that's like 90% the length of your car. And then they can't do it. And I'm like, I, I don't think I could do it either. Like, it, that's my incentive to always, you know, maintain some kind of attention, at least when I drive. Is because I don't want to end up on Canada's worst driver, have a bunch of people, like, eating hickory sticks at home. They'll be like, wow, this dummy can't even, you know, at lightning speed react to, like, a soccer ball a hundred yards away being kicked into the middle of the road. Dude, this is a problem. We don't have our evolved version yet. I think. Hickory sticks? It's just, it's a Canadian thing, sweetheart. It's Brittany, bitch. Hickory sticks are pretty pog. They, they are pretty pog, but I do think that maybe they should sell, like, every hickory stick bag should sell a glove that you wear to eat the hickory sticks so that your hand doesn't get all powdered and then you can eat the glove after. Like kind of a fun dip for hickory sticks. We need hollow heart. Don't be stupid. That's an atrocious idea. I got another one. You know those vending machines that have candy in them? They should make those but for potato chips. Because sometimes I'll be at the grocery store and I'll be like, Oh, I've been really good with the Peloton lately. I should buy some chips for no reason. I guess the reason is because they taste good and my body's like, salt's good for you probably. But after I eat like four chips, I'm like, man, I wish I didn't 
buy this many chips. I don't need this many chips. No, I'm not talking about the ones that have like a little bag of chips in them. I'm talking about, you know, the candy ones you put a quarter into and then like four jelly beans pop out. Thanks a lot, Jerome Powell. I want that, but it distributes like two chips. I don't even want the small bag. I just want a taste. I mean, maybe like... I mean, it's a bad value, don't get me wrong, but sometimes like a bad value is like good for you. Just close the bag. Yeah, okay, maybe I'll just close the bag after I open it. Maybe I'll just stop breathing oxygen. As long as we're talking about things that I can't do. We really need to kill a champion and get evolved. It won't work from an engineering standpoint. You don't have any imagination. You're, you're the person in the 1800s that's going, we need faster horses. You don't even know what's capable yet. If, we, if you could just conceive of a car. So maybe it won't work in the candy vending machines. Okay, we'll just design a new vending machine that has like, I don't know, a shelf that you can put a quarter into and then it unlocks and you pull it out. And then I'm getting it. I'm getting the orb. Don't, don't get it twisted. And then as a result of all of that, we don't care for fire wand. You, you reach in and there's two chips in there. Then when you slot it back in, two more chips pop down into the shelf. They do have peanuts sometimes. This is all moot because in like 2022, I'm not using one of those machines anyway. I don't know how long that candy's been in there. <laughs> I'm not even worried about like the, you know, whether the COVID virus can live on the aluminum handle of a... Uh, one of those candy vending machines, I'm much more concerned about, like, these jelly beans might have been put in here in, like, 2008. Does anybody even use that shit anymore? How much would you pay for two chips? I mean, it's a bad deal. I think maybe if they could give you, like, a handful of chips, a, a quarter is a fair price. But you also... The smaller a quantity you buy of something, the more you accept that you're going to pay a higher per unit price than if you bought it in a larger quantity. Like when you're buying the, like a, I don't know, what does a six pack of Coca-Cola cost at the grocery store? I'm going to say four Canadian dollars roughly. I bet if you bought the six mini cans, it's probably like three twenty-five. But sometimes there's value in buying the mini cans because you're like, all I want is a little bit. I mean, I don't buy them, but all I want is a little bit of Coca-Cola. We got to escape as soon as possible. Um, and to not have the temptation to drink the extra, you know, 150 milliliters. Maybe that maybe you're making an investment in your own health by slightly overpaying for too little soda. I've come, I've come to respect the methodology as I've gotten a little older. And a little wiser, I might say. Please. We need the evolution, man. That must be the axe. Holy cow. More? Who's the loser now? Who's the loser now? <laughs> it's the battle of the hot gates. Then this champion goes down, we get our second evolved form. Dude, I want reduced cooldown. That's the only thing that matters to me right now, is getting these axes out here faster, or these scythes. Now we have unlimited HP as well. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude, honestly, I'm content with my weapons right now. Let me get a Laurel. 
Why not? Takes up our last weapon slot. Means we don't have to evolve something else, you know, as one of our choices. Meaning we get a better selection of choices as is. Feeling pretty good. But like, I definitely, like my, my vice, and I've done a good job of um, resisting. My grocery store vice is tortilla chips. Because we eat a lot of, you know, like pseudo Mexican food. I always have salsa on hand. So I, sometimes I'll just be at the grocery store and my willpower will fall. I'll lie to myself and be like, you deserve this. And then I'll buy the tortilla chips, but they always come in such a huge bag that by the time I've satisfied my tortilla chip um, craving, I still have like 80% of the chips that I'm not getting the same kind of like utility out of. I feel like... I. I, w I mean, I, I've been on... This is a very Kramer idea. But I, I've been on this for a while. The idea of a grocery store that instead of selling you bigger versions of things, sells you smaller versions of things, so you create less food waste or less unnecessary gluttony. There's probably some degree of necessary gluttony. I'm not saying all gluttony is sinful. Necessarily. You'll create more packaging waste. Yeah, but honestly, like, I don't know. Like, look, I do consider myself an environmentalist. But ever since I saw that um, Lufthansa flew 13,000 flights that were empty in Europe uh, just to maintain their airport priorities, I was like, you know what? Give me the fucking plastic straw. When they start... Knocking that shit off. I'll go back to the biodegradable straw, okay? Hold on. But like, why am I busting my ass doing all this composting and, you know, I'm bringing my own bags to the grocery store feeling like I'm making a difference? And then... KLM Airlines is like, oh yeah, we threw, we flew 13,747 flights across Europe just for fun. Like, when they start doing my part, I'm back in. I mean, I'm still using the biodegradable straws because it's illegal to give plastic ones here, and you also have to bring your own bags to the grocery store now, and also any business that gives you a paper bag has to charge you 25 cents per paper bag, including McDonald's, which is kind of hilarious, um, but... I don't know. So surely if Vancouver just does that for like the next 10,000 years, that might count, cancel out that like one action that those airlines took. But we're working on it. E everything helps. <laughs> a book 60 cents in Sweden honestly I mean that's very expensive for sure I stopped you know the what I have I haven't really changed my actions but what I have done is I've stopped judging people who are like oh yeah I forgot my bags I feel like for about a decade because I was an early adopter. I've been using those reusable grocery bags 2007, maybe 2008. It's easy to trick yourself into being like, you know, well, I'm driving a Prius and you're driving a Honda Civic. What, do you hate the earth? Now I'm just like, you know what? Be kind to yourself. Everybody forgets things from time to time. Nobody's perfect. If there's a post-mortem on planet Earth, and, you know, scientists in the distant future are like, if they had only used more reusable bags, we this all could have been avoided, then I'll be like, bad take on me. I apologize. There's no hindsight's 2020, doctor. I apologize, even though I'm using the reusable bags all the time. But I do, I've started to feel like we're getting kind of gaslit a little bit. my carbon footprint from smoking that shit. Never should have smoked that shit. Now I'm 
burn in more fossil fuels than uh, minting a um, bored ape. There you go, we got there. The Lufthansa defenders have logged on. Dude, I flying is sick. So I, I hate to come for the aviation industry. I guess it's, it's uh, like amazing. But like, I don't know. Flying for no reason, kind of silly. Dude, we had no choice but to exercise it. Otherwise we would have lost our ability to land at Sheephole Airport in exactly the right corridor when most people buy tickets. Okay. Any askers in chat? I don't know. I'm just I'm just going off. Ten minutes remain. Like I didn't know that if you don't use it, you lose it is actually the law in the world of airports. I thought that was just the thing they made fun of in the movie The 40-Year-Old Virgin. It's also the law in the world of forestry. I don't know about all that. <laughs> anyway, people in chat are arguing. I think I do. I'm, what I meant to say was pog, pog, pog. Pog, do you see the Activision Microsoft news? Pog, Pog, Pog. Pog, Call of Duty on Game Pass. Dude, what do you think that, um, do you think that Microsoft's gonna let Call of Duty be on PlayStation and they're just gonna make it included with the Game Pass subscription as a competitive advantage? Or do you think alternatively, they're gonna blacklist Sony from being able to have Call of Duty and thus serve as an unbelievable selling point for the Xbox? It's an interesting question. Entertain me, don't educate me. Most education online is entertainment. How's that for a take? I don't even know what this means, but when you say it, you sound smart. The medium is the damn message. You ever think about that? Why doesn't Microsoft, instead of buying Activision, why didn't they just buy Nintendo? That would have been sick, man. Can you imagine playing Super Mario 64 on an Xbox controller? My PB would probably improve by like two minutes. Nintendo won't sell. Just buy stock until you own 50% of the company. How hard could it be? It's that simple. Evolved Bible. Here we go. This guy's brain is huge. You can buy any company. Just buy the stocks, man. It's called a hostile takeover, I think. Hey, I'm gonna... As long as we're talking about, like, honest questions here, this is an honest question. In the last two years, I learned a lot about investing, but one question has always stayed in my brain, okay? And it's a foundational question. Why should a company care on a on a non-individual level why should a company care about its stock price you know when they initially offer the shares it raises money but then from that point onwards once it's on the market individual or institutional investors are trading the shares so why does it matter let's say to peloton that their stock is down 80 percent from uh you know, all-time highs in the past year. I do, so one thing is, I get it on an individual level, the executives at a company hold a lot of stock and are compensated in stock. So they want to have it go as high as possible for their own compensation. But like on a, on a corporate operations level, is there any reason? Is it like you can leverage 
you know, your market cap as a way to get more financing or something. Because some people are also like, well, it makes the shareholders mad when the stock goes down. Yeah, but like, what are they going to do? Sell your stock? Okay, they're not, they're selling it to somebody else. They're not, it's no money out of your pocket. I guess the price goes down, but. Like, I feel like there's got to be more incentive than just, maybe there doesn't, but. <laughs> than just our, you know, individual equity value gets lower for like eight people for a company that has thousands of employees. That's all I got though. The company holds stock too? Yeah, but like, surely there's gotta be like something they do with it, right? It's got like it's got to be collateral or something. Like I I just can't understand I guess why like I mean maybe this is like too naive, but I'm like why does your stock price going down mean like the CEO is bad? Maybe you just didn't make good memes, so you didn't get picked up by Wall Street bets. And all of a sudden, people are like, hey, we got to get we got to get a new CEO of Regal. The AMC CEO is blowing us out of the water by giving people, you know, free popcorn if they can show that they own a share. Anyway, that's all I got. Okay, there's a real answer. The company has a fiduciary obligation to the shareholder to try to keep the price of it high as long as possible. SEC has joined the chat. Do you want your business to be valuable? I mean, like, it's kind of a, it's a false dilemma, I guess. You know, like if there were shares in like NL Core, I mean, look at Vampire Survivors, man. They would be soaring right now, for sure. But let's assume that like they went down. I mean, I guess as the CEO, president, maestro, guru of the corporation, I would be like, oh no, I'm not as wealthy anymore. But if people were like, is the company in trouble? The share price went down? I think I would just be like, I'm not in trouble, man. I'm just playing way too much Slay the Spire. At any given moment, I could just knock out the Slay the Spire and start doing modded Isaac runs, and we could add like a, a little bit more to our yearly operating income. But maybe I'm just, th this might be the truth. Maybe I'm just too cracked at business to understand what life would be like if the stock price went down. Because in my head, I'm like, just be better. <laughs> I don't know where this is going. I don't know where it's going. Anyway, that's all I got. We're going to win this run, by the way. 2744 incoming, zero chance. Zero chance. I'm not in my best banter in Vampire Survivors. There's a lot of stuff on the screen. Is it true you eat leftovers cold? Most, I would say, yeah, most. And we've been through this conversation many times as well. I would not, uh, you know, eat... If, if we had leftover chili, I wouldn't just eat it cold out the pot or anything like that. But like, sane foods that you would, you could fathom eating cold, but you would probably rather warm up, I'd probably eat cold. Triple coins, man, triple coins. Cold chicken, cold pizza. Cold women and warm beer. I just can't be getting out of here. You guys know Tom Waits? Cold fried rice? No, I, I reheat the fried rices.
rice. I, I've eaten a reasonable amount of cold rice. It, it, in my opinion, it does taste better hot. I cannot be harmed. Dude, but honestly, like, there are some things cold if you've never tried them. You owe it to yourself to give it a shot. I'm being a thousand percent genuine. One, I mean, cold pizza is the given, but cold fried chicken is actually like, it's a different experience. I would, I would give it like my highest endorsement for cold foods. I didn't mean to take the chicken. Like straight up, if you're doing the Dan's game face, eh, but you warm up your leftover fried chicken in the microwave, my cold fried chicken is superior to your microwave warmed up fri fried chicken for sure. The microwave, it, it fucks with the batter, man. It gets all like, the grease gets like, it turns into superheated plasma paper that just like falls apart. I'm telling you, the cold fried chicken is a bit of an experience. You could warm it up in the air fryer if you want. But like by the time you get your chicken out of the air fryer, I'll have already finished lunch and I'll be back at my desk gunning for that promotion. So if that's the hill you want to die on, if you want to go home and tell your spouse, sorry, honey, I didn't get the promotion because I'm too much of a baby to eat cold fried chicken. I lost the promotion to the guy at work that's always eating his food straight out of the refrigerator so he can be 5% more effective in the workplace, then so be it. That's a conversation that I'm not willing to have. It's the Sigma, Sigma mindset, man. If you gave me either an air fryer or a book that said how to warm up your food, I would take the book because the information in the book would be more valuable than the air fryer. By the way, is still working my way through Seinfeld season eight. I told all the media critics online, the media men beg to differ judging by the hole in the satellite picture. A lot of critics say season eight is where the season fell or the, the series fell off. Still heavily disagreeing. Many classic episodes season eight, including last night. Believe it or not, George is in at home. Please leave a message. You can't kill me. At the beep. I must be out or I pick up the phone. New record. Where could I be? Believe it or not, I'm not home. Level 90. Let's go. Lived for six seconds. Take me on a, a power up here. Movement speed overrated. I will say I do kind of like a passive crown that doesn't require you to get the full crown. Give me a slash marker. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Slash marker vampire survivors two.